Welcome to this new segment of 10 Minutes of Tech. In this segment, we're going to be creating your own custom classifier in Watson Visual Recognition. Watson Visual Recognition has a default classifier class that allows you to process images and run against the default classification and return scored results against the images that have been processed to identify objects within the picture, colors, and other aspects of that image. There are going to be six steps that we will go through for creating this custom classifier. First is looking at and making sure that we have the installed prerequisites. Then we're going to log into our Bluemix account and create a Watson Visual Recognition service. We're going to look at the information necessary for creating a sample image set. We're going to go ahead and create the custom classifier and train Watson. Next, after that, training has been completed, we're going to test some images against the classifier, and finally we're going to delete that custom classifier. The prerequisites necessary for this is a Bluemix account. If you do not have a Bluemix account, you may go to bluemix.net and create yourself an account. In addition, you will need to download the curl scripting tool from the URL on the screen. First, we will log into our Bluemix account and we're going to go ahead and create the Watson Visual Recognition Service. In this process, the key aspect that we need to use and leverage for the furthering of this lab is the API underscore key value. After logging into our Bluemix account, we're going to go to the hamburger menu on the left, select Services and Watson. Click on Create Watson Service and all the available services will be displayed from the Watson list. We're going to select Visual Recognition. The service name and credentials will remain the same for us, but you may change them if you so desire. We're going to click Create to create the service, and as the service is created, the credentials will also be created for that service. Now that the service has been created, will select Service Credentials. You'll see that the credentials that you've created are listed and we're going to use the down arrow to view the credentials. We're going to copy the API key information as this will be used later on in the session. Now that the API key has been created and we have the credentials, let's talk about what we're actually going to be doing in this session for this custom classifier. We're going to be creating our own skin tone analysis that will be able to analyze skin tones in pictures and give a color value back with a confidence rating for that palette. In this case, we're using a very simple color palette that has five colors. And for this example, we're only going to be using three, the darkest of tones, the mid-tone, and the lightest of tones. Using those values found in the RGB and hex color numbers, I created alternate colors and hues for each of those three that I mentioned, the darkest, lightest, and the mid-tone. You'll see in the screen that there is varying colors and hues that have been made from the original color palette itself. Each of the samples needs a minimum of 10 colors for Watson to be able to be trained within the visual recognition. With this sample color set, I zip each one of the color files into a respective archive that's classified to each of those major color tones that I mentioned. These will be used in the training aspect. When you train Watson, you can train it with positive and negative examples. In this example, we're only going to be using positive color values and no negative values. To enhance the actual training capability, negative values have a great influence on being able to identify and have a higher value of hit rate when it's trained in this manner. We're going to be using curl to run these scripts against that, and we're going to create examples for each of the three color tones. I'm going to create the name of it as my skin tone palette. And then I'm going to use the API key that we created earlier as the identifier of the associated function. I opened a command window and I 
change the directory into where the curl executable exists. To simplify this process for this example, I copied all of the zip files associated to the colors into the same directory so I don't have to change the pathing. Once I've imported those into the process, it will be trained and it will under start to understand the colors and aspects and ratios. Using a text editor, I've taken that curl script and made modifications to it to point to the correct files and directories and the API key. I've pasted it into this, the command window and now I'm executing it against that. It's created my classifier ID that I have with the name of which I've given it, the owner, the status is training, the date it was created, and the three associated classes of colors that I've nominated through that scripting process. You will need to copy the classifier underscore ID value as this will be used later in the session. The Watson visual recognition for this new classifier is in the status of training. We need to validate that the training has been completed before we can proceed. Looking at the capabilities, we need to check the status that's changed from training to ready. And to do this, we'll use the curl script that you see on the screen. We will need both the classifier ID and the API key to complete this task. Back within the command window, I've edited the task and now I'm pasted it into the screen. When I hit return, we'll notice that the status has been changed from training to ready and I still have all the other associated values of the classifier ID and the three classes that were created. Now that the training is complete, we're ready to go ahead and test the custom classifier. First, we need to open up and create a new notepad text file and we'll name that file myparams.json. And in this file, we need to identify the classifier ID that was created when we created the new custom classifier. Within the text editor or notepad, we're gonna go ahead and create the context of the JSON file. You'll notice that the classifier IDs is defined and it's using the current custom one that we just created as well as the default. The new myparams JSON file should be stored in the same directory that the curl executable is located as well. Now to run the test, we're going to run a curl script against that images that we have within the directory. As you can see on my screen, I have six samples of different tones that I can use against this. In fact, in one of them, the IMG7912 is an actual picture of my skin so that I can get an understanding of which skin tone my particular skin color fits within. For the first test, I'm going to go ahead and use Notepad again to edit the sample. And in this case, I'm using sample underscore espresso as the initial file that I'm going to be running it against. When I execute it against the service, it's going to run against both those classifiers, my custom classifier and the default classifier. In this case, it's coming back with 8D5524 class, and it's giving me a rating of 65.1% as a rated value of how that classifies that color against the three custom classifiers I have. Using the default class, it's also going through and understanding what particular aspects of that color is matching within the default class itself. You'll notice that it gives you additional coloring matches as it's shown in, the, in these three below for light brown color at 54%, wood graining at 53%, and reddish brown color at 77.8%. The key with creating a custom classifier is to really hone in on what objects, colors, or classifications that you're trying to create in this example. The next thing we'll do is actually run the color classification against my own skin tone picture. Using the notepad editor again, I modify the sample and now I'm pointing at the IMG7912 file that was the picture of my skin. I'm running it against the custom classifiers and awaiting the result. 
With the result, you'll notice that the class is now rated as FFDBAC, which is the lightest of the skin tone class with a confidence rate of 64.4%. Inclusive, when you look at the default, you'll notice that there's a freckle that it found within the colors and it's rating at 78.8%, pigmentation color of 66%, and then light brown color as well as beige colors are being pulled back from that. This was an example of how to create the custom classifier and actually run a test with pictures and images against that custom classifier. The next thing we'll do is actually delete the classifier so that we can create additional classifiers within this sample stream. To delete the custom classifier, we're going to execute another curl script. In this script, you need the classifier ID and the API key. Back within the command window, I've used Notepad again to edit that curl script, and now I'm going to go ahead and paste that into the window. I'm going to execute that, and it's going to go ahead and delete that custom classifier. Now there are no custom classifiers associated to my Watson Visual Recognition Service. Thank you for watching this video and I hope you got benefit out of the value.